this demonstration of NetBackup self-service, we're going to be having a look at the tenant view uh, of the portal. So you can see I've logged in as a tenant user. Uh, you can see the main elements on the home page. Uh, first of all, we can see the traffic lights on the left here. Um, these represent machines that are either healthy, uh, which is represented by the green one. So these have all been backed up within a threshold uh, that we've set. Uh, we can see the red machines, so we know that no backup has occurred in, in the, within the threshold that we've set. Uh, and we also have three uh, machines that are uh, not protected at all, uh, so those are set as amber. I can click on any of the tiles and you can see we, we get a concatenation of the machines below, so we only see machines that relate to that particular tile status. Uh, I can go back into here uh, and we can uh, switch it on for all of them. Uh, over on the right here, you can see that we've got uh, information relating to the usage uh, for this particular tenant. Uh, you have the option to put in a uh, maximum usage for this tenant. Uh, in this case, we've set it at 2.05 gigabytes. Uh, we can see that they're actually using 1.98 of that, and that's worked it out as 97%. Um, nothing's going to happen when it goes over that threshold. It's purely just for information. Uh, and if you don't want to show the percentage, uh, then you can switch that off at the tenant level, uh, and it would just show this 1.98 figure within the box. Further over on the right, then, we've got some graphs that relate to uh, usage information as well. You can see here that we're showing uh, usage via uh, information relating to new backups, also average consumed capacity, uh, as well as total consumed capacity. Each of the definitions for how these are calculated is uh, included within the graph itself. Uh, and if you click on the uh, question mark, you can see where all that data uh, has actually been generated from. If I click into a particular month, so if we click into uh, April on here, then we get a breakdown of all of the different uh, machines. Uh, and we get an individual figure now of uh, information relating to their consumed capacity. Uh, what it was previously, what, what the new consumed capacity is, uh, what, what's been expired, what's current, what's average, etc. So lots of information there about all of the machines and the uh, capacity that they're using. Further on the right, we've got information that can uh, relate to uh, charging. Uh, if you were to put a, a charging element in, uh, it would go and show uh, a particular value uh, at the end there. Um, and you can give that as a, an indication of what you're likely to be charged. Again, all of this information can be uh, exported by the export usage button. Uh, if I click on that, it'll go and create a CSV file, and you can pull that into uh, your reports. If I go back onto uh, the actual uh, inventory uh, list down here, uh, we can see then all the different machines. If we click into, first of all, the healthy one, we can see we've got information, again, that's relating to the actual capacity that this machine is taking up. We can see historical averages on this as well, uh, as well as the, the green tile, just to let us know that everything is healthy here. We can see that this machine is actually uh, being put into three different protection levels, uh, and we can see all of those are healthy. So we can, if we look down here, we can see that backups have been uh, occurring regularly. We can see the date and time, which master server they were put on, uh, and also which individual policy they were running on NetBackup as well. You've also got com uh, commands on here that allow you to go and restore that machine, uh, to do an ad hoc backup, a backup now, uh, and also if we wanted to, to add that machine into uh, more protection policies as well. That's a healthy machine. If we look at a red machine, we can see uh, this is actually showing with the, with the status of uh, red, showing that the backups have been uh, exceeded. This is because, for whatever reason, no backups have ever been done on this machine, so there's clearly something wrong. Uh, the actual threshold that we've set is 672 hours on here, but as you can see, there's no backups, so uh, there's certainly no backups ever been done within that time period. Okay, if I wanted to go uh, onto a particular machine that isn't protected then, we wanted to add that into a uh, protection policy, uh, then we can do that via the cog on the right. So as soon as I click on the cog, uh, we get a number of options uh, available to us. So I can go and view the details. That shows us the sort of screen that we saw before with all of the 
details about the individual machine. Uh, and then I've got the ability to add in uh, this machine to a particular protection level. Now these are the protection levels that have been defined. We've just called them gold, silver and bronze here, but you can call them whatever you like. You can have uh, as many as you like as well, uh, and they can all relate to uh, individual policies or sets of policies uh, that you want to add this machine into on uh, net backup. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it into the gold policy. Uh, when I do that, it comes up with a form. Uh, we don't need to fill any of the details in. It's all being pre-populated with the machine. Uh, and the actual type of uh, protection level that's being put into. Uh, and if I wanted to put a reference, uh, some uh, extra information here, I can include that, as well as if you wanted to add other fields in here, it's very easy to, uh, to do that as well, if you want to capture more information as this uh, was going through. So as I click on uh, Protect, that's now going to pass that uh, all that information over to Net Backup. Uh, and it's going to instruct Net Backup now to go and add that machine into uh, that gold policy. We can see that the cog is going round, uh, and also we can see that the protection is currently modified. Now, although we're going to add that into a policy, uh, that particular machine won't be backed up until uh, the uh, backup is due to run, which, which may be the middle of the night. So again, what we have is the option in this case is to do a backup now. So this is an immediate backup, a one-time backup. Again, if I click on that, that's going to uh, populate the form. We can see all of the, uh, the details about the machine there. And then I get the option to go in and pick a particular retention level. You can decide, so you can take away uh, these particular uh, levels that you want to offer. Uh, you might just want to offer one or two weeks or whatever. All of that can be modified uh, within the form. So I'm just going to pick on one week. Again, click on Backup Now, uh, and that's now going to send off uh, that, that, all that information over to uh, Net Backup, and it's going to go and uh, run a backup now. So we can see that that machine is now in the policy gold that we set it previously, but it's still showing as red because there, there are, haven't any, uh, no backups have actually been carried out in that in the actual protection policy. Now, what I'm also going to show you is if we go back into the view details, if we go back into this uh, ad hoc request that's going through, I just wanted to show you some of the uh, details on the fulfillment side. Uh, so this is a, a view on the form. Uh, we can see if we wanted to on the request tab, we can see all the details that we originally entered. Uh, and then we can see within the fulfillment uh, what's actually happening with this particular request. So we can see here that it's passing down uh, through this fulfillment. Uh, it's first of all kicking the backup off on the net backup. We're then going to monitor that particular uh, backup. So we're just going to sort of uh, uh, go around and uh, check it every three minutes. If it, if it carries on for longer than 30 minutes, uh, we're going to check it once an hour. All of this, this information here can be configured. Uh, to match your sort of local preferences. Uh, so that's just going to keep checking to see whether that backup is done. Now, once that, that uh, backup is complete, uh, we're then going to go down if it's a, a successful backup. Uh, we have the ability to send out an alert uh, to whoever we want to, maybe the requester, maybe uh, an administrator to say that that backup was successful. If it was unsuccessful, then we can send out uh, a, a failure alert to, again, to wh whoever needs to see it. It could be at this stage as well that maybe we wanted to go and raise a ticket onto a uh, fulfillment system. Um, there's already adapters available for uh, service desk systems like uh, HP Service Manager and uh, ServiceNow. Uh, those can be downloaded and installed uh, and you could, maybe at this stage that you wanted to, uh, to go and raise a ticket. The fulfillment is very easy to uh, administer and it can all be done. Uh, via the uh, uh, via the uh, overall administrator, uh, and it's all uh, click and point, uh, and it can be done by a business user. Okay, finally then, the tab that we have here is the audit tab, so as it's going through the different uh, fulfillment steps and uh, process steps, we keep a tag of that uh, within the audit tab. There are obviously full audit tabs available uh, elsewhere, uh, that give us really every everything that happens on the system and tells us uh, who it was all done by. Okay, so that's the actual uh, request itself going into uh, a bit more detail. 
Um, let's now just go and have a look at a restore service. So in this case, let's have a look at a, a restore file. Uh, so in this case, if I come onto uh, one of these machines, and uh, this time we're going to click on to restore file. Uh, again, we can see we've brought up a, uh, a form, we've pre-populated it with the, uh, the actual machine, uh, and now we get the choice of picking from a, a number of backups that have been completed. Uh, in this case then, we also have the option to either browse that or search it. So if we know uh, roughly where the file is, we can browse it. This is going to bring up the uh, folder structure uh, that's on the, uh, on the backup. Uh, image and we can go through here we can open up uh, different folders and we can basically drill down uh, and identify the the, the uh, folder the file or whatever it is we actually wanted to uh, restore so I can pick from uh, a number of different uh, areas here we can pick at say this uh, top level and uh, pick one of those as well click on OK it's going to bring all of that information now back into the form so later on when we submitted it uh, it will go off and instruct NetBack up to uh, restore that. Uh, as well as being able to do a browse, we also have the capability to do a search for files on here. Uh, again, if I put some uh, search criteria in, and we've got some uh, basic uh, search uh, query uh, function here, if I put in something like temp, uh, we can see it brings up the first 300 matches, or not 300 in this case, but it'll do the first 300 matches. Uh, and then we can just go and click from uh, and select all the files that we wanted to uh, include. Again, those are all now populated within the request. Uh, we need to uh, decide if we want to restore it to the original location or a new location. Uh, out of the box, Net Backup Self Service comes like this, but you can very easily change it. If you have some other process that you want, if you want it to go to a different location, if you don't want to have the option to go to the original location at all, then you can very easily change that within the form. Uh, finally then, uh, I'm gonna confirm, uh, overwrite it if it exists, and we'll click on the restore file, and that will now send that in, uh, request off to NetBackup uh, to uh, complete. So that's uh, a quick overview on all of the uh, functionality that we've got within the uh, computer inventory. A couple more things to uh, run through then. Uh, first of all, I just want to show you this uh, report viewer, as well as having all of the usage information available uh, within the, uh, the, the tabs at the top and, and, the, and the breakdown. If you are producing individual reports, maybe through OpCenter, maybe through another report generator, those can all be displayed uh, within this report viewer here. Each tenant has its own repository where you can basically put files, uh, but probably PDF files that are, that are outputs from a, a report uh, uh, application, uh, and they can then display those files in here. You have the option to view it, and you also have the option to download it as well. You also have the option to hide this panel uh, if it's not appropriate for a user to see it as well. Also on here then, just one other thing I wanted to show you, a couple of uh, common things that you'd expect to see on most portals. You have the ability in here to select from a number of different languages. Uh, so if you don't want to use English, you can use uh, one of the other languages that, that is available here. Um, there's 11 altogether. Uh, you can also change your time zone. You can also set your uh, out of office details if you're going to be going away. Uh, and you can also here change uh, your password. So just the normal sort of things that you expect to have uh, within a, a portal. Now this particular user is also a tenant administrator. So they have the ability to actually come in and do some management of the system as well. So they can manage basic things like the ability to uh, add users and to uh, you know, update users. Uh, and also they can do things like uh, notice management. This is displaying information to uh, other users in the, uh, in, in the tenant as well. So all of that is, is available. Uh, this user, as we said before, sees all of the inventory for this particular tenant. But what I wanted to show you next was how another tenant user has different uh, access, uh, has a different access profile for this tenant and doesn't see all of the things that this first user sees. So I'm gonna log out as the uh, admin user and we're gonna log in as uh, this uh, potential user. 
and straight away you can see uh, that they no longer see all of the machines that were within the uh, inventory list before. They're seeing a selection of machines. So they're just seeing the machines that maybe they're interested in or maybe that they're, they're an owner of. Uh, also on the right here, whereas we had lots of options for uh, adding machines into different policies, etc., they only have access uh, to actually do a restore file. Now you can decide, you can cut up uh, which particular backup and restore services you want to allocate to individual users, uh, but this one's just been set up, so all they can do from here is a file restore. So it's just showing you that it's a slightly different uh, user with a different profile. They don't have this uh, admin option here, so they can't go in and manage things. Uh, and you can decide what particular profiles you want for your users uh, and then allocate those to uh, users on, the, on an individual basis. Uh, finally then, the other view that I wanted to show you was uh, the view uh, that uh, the, uh, a user would see if they were using uh, vCloud. Uh, so again, I'm going to come into here. Everything's very similar. Uh, except on the left here, you can see that we're actually showing the uh, vCloud uh, containers uh, and the tree structure. Uh, and uh, any machines that aren't in vCloud would be shown uh, under this uh, other option down the bottom. You don't have to set anything for this. It'll automatically uh, switch to this if you've got vCloud uh, connected. Um, it is quite useful then, uh, you're able to go in and do things like if you wanted to set the password for your vCloud director, you can do that from here. Uh, you can also do things like apply particular policies to the whole container. And it's kind of in, an intelligent policy uh, because as you add any new machines into that particular container, they will uh, get backed up as well. Uh, everything else is uh, the same, but as I say, you do just get this view on the uh, tree structure of vCloud and you get the ability to, uh, to manage the container level as well. Okay, so that completes this uh, short demonstration of uh, NetBackup self-service. If you wanted to uh, know any more, then uh, please refer to the uh, online documentation. Thank you.